Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're so thankful that you're here today. We are providing a media briefing on the impacts of the storm hurricane Idalia that will be coming through Chatham County tomorrow. And of course, we are certainly looking at the potential impacts from this storm that could have some outcomes for operations on Thursday as well. My name is Kurt Hedegar and I'm the Chief Public Affairs and Administrative Services Officer for Savannah Chatham County Public Schools. It's an honor to have our command policy group partners here with us today that are representing uh, various aspects of the city of Savannah and the county of Chatham with us here today. And also we do have representatives from the Chatham uh, Transit Authority, CAT, as well, to talk to you a little bit about the operational impacts. The main thing we wanted to stress for everyone is to certainly take this storm very seriously and heed the warnings of all of the individuals who are providing real-time updates on the path of the storm and the potential impacts for our area. As a school district in this county that has 36,000 some students that we serve on a daily basis and 5,600 employees, it's something that we certainly look at very seriously and that we do not make moves like this in a vacuum. That's why you see individuals uh, like this behind us here today who are working together in a command policy group format to share information, provide updates on their respective agencies, and also come together as a collective group to know that when one makes a decision, it does have a certain ripple effect across the entire city of Savannah and across the entire county of Chad. Uh, as I said, we have a large footprint in Chatham County, 426 square miles is what we cover. We have 50 buildings in Chatham County Public Schools alone that are under the oversight of the Superintendent of Schools. And then we have a whole host of administrative buildings beyond that that we have to account for. So when you come to a decision like this, it certainly is uh, no simple move. But I will say as a school district, we've become very well poised to make a quick pivot and a quick shift to account for uh, operational disruptions of this magnitude. So we did make a decision today, which our superintendent of schools, Dr. Uh, Denise Watts, is here to talk to you a little bit more about in our decision and what that means for the families of Chatham County Public Schools and also for the 5,600 employees that we employ. Uh, just a point of um, context and reference, as I said, this is something we're familiar with doing. We did find ourselves in a very similar situation last year. It was September 29th with the oncoming Hurricane Ian that we had to do a pivot to virtual learning in Chatham County. So as I said, we're well poised for these types of moves, uh, but it's something, again, that we take very seriously and we recognize the impact that it has on the county at large and also on our parents for preparation and their own work that they're doing to ensure the safety of their own families. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to our superintendent of schools to provide you an overview of school operations, and then we'll make introductions of our various partners who will be providing you updates today, and then we'll close with questions and answers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, representing Savannah Chatham County Public Schools, I now turn the microphone over to our superintendent, Dr. Denise Watts. Thank you, good afternoon. We appreciate the support of our command policy partners. We could not do this work alone. Um, and it's definitely been a collaborative partner. Your guidance has been instrumental. Uh, the storm, as mentioned, should not be taken lightly. And we always uh, operate with, it is in the best interest of our students to be with their families and to shelter in place so that they can take necessary precautions. Based on the available information and data, we have decided it is in the best entry, interest and safety of all that we shift to a virtual model of operation over the next two days. So given that, all buildings and district facilities will be closed for in-person activities on Wednesday, August 30th and Thursday, August 31st. 
For our students, this means remote teaching and learning will take place as conditions allow. Obviously, we recognize that there may be interruption to electricity. So again, we're stressing as conditions allow. Um, if a student is not able to access the internet or a computer or may the electricity may fail in the home, students will be provided with alternative learning assignments to overcome these connectivity challenges. While we recognize that the storm is right now supposed to pass our area by Thursday, that's what the data is telling us, we will need time to assess our facilities our technical systems and other operational aspects before we can return to school. So Thursday is a review day and a recovery day, providing our school district time to assess those conditions. Throughout the in-person closure, authorized essential personnel, so this is for staff, essential personnel should be reporting to work um, as their managers prescribe. This includes members of our security team. Uh, they'll be securing assets, our operational team, uh, who will be t determining when it is safe and conducive to reopen our schools and administrative offices. While crews will be conducting that work, staff and students will be able to continue working, learning, and teaching virtually. Again, Thursday is also a virtual day. It is important to note that on our academic calendar, Friday, September the 1st, was already scheduled to be an e-learning day in advance of the Labor Day holiday. So staff, you will be reporting to your designated work locations on Friday unless you receive communication otherwise. Students, our students will learn virtually from home on Friday, September 1st as already designated a e-learning day. It's important to note for our coaches, athletes, and families, athletics have been canceled for Wednesday and Thursday. And again, Thursday will be a day that we will assess conditions and make decisions regarding any changes to athletic events scheduled for Friday. And we will make those in a timely manner. Uh, finally, it's important to note that Monday, September the 4th is a holiday for our school district. We expect to see, see our students back, our teachers back, our staff back in, per, in person on Tuesday, September the 5th. Thank you. And of course, as I said earlier, we don't make decisions like this in a vacuum. One of our key partners is the Chatham Emergency Management Agency. I will say as a school district, again, of our scope, that we are proud that we work in the forefront and have forward thinking about possible operational disruptions like this, so much to the point that we do have a dedicated hurricane emergency plan that does spell out certain trigger points for what the school district will do based on an impending storm. One of the key components, however, is the relationship that we have uh, with our partners like the Chatham Emergency Management Agency team. So our team from our campus police department, our operations team, our own emergency management uh, players that we have embedded in our campus police department have been working extensively and talking regularly with Chatham Emergency Management uh, Agency. So we're happy today that we do have the director uh, from SEMA here, Mr. Dennis Jones, who is going to give you an operational update on the storm and other important matters. Thank you, Kurt. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, SEMA has been actively working this storm since Saturday. It actually became a named tropical storm, uh, tropical depression on Sunday morning, but we've actually been working this system since Saturday. So uh, as of right now, it is a category one hurricane forecast to become a category three uh, as it approaches the Florida Peninsula. And then as it makes landfall start deteriorating and then come across the top of Chatham as a tropical storm. So with that, uh, SEMA is activated to a level three or a readiness status within the Emergency Operations Center. We have additional staff that have been brought in to make sure we are maintaining situational awareness of the storm. We have regular updates with our municipal partners, uh, police, fire, uh, as well as EMS and public works, making sure that we know what their operational tempos are, making sure we know what their unmet needs are. So we coordinate uh, with them on a regular basis. 
Uh, we also have been looking at the airport, making sure that we understand what the airport's needs are, uh, how they're going to respond to this particular event, what their readiness status is. In addition to that, we've also talked with uh, GDOT about what they're going to do with the Talmadge Bridge. There are no bridge closures planned right now. That'll be an at-time decision. If uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation or local law enforcement determine that any bridge in Chatham County is unsafe, then they have the authority to close that bridge at any particular time. So again, any bridge closures will be an at-time decision. Uh, same thing with the road going out to Tybee Island, the road going out to Burnside Island. We are looking at an above average tide sequence. We're looking at a 10.1 tide forecast for Wednesday night. And if uh, Tybee Road or the causeway going out to Burnside does become encroached with water, then local law enforcement will make the decision to close those roadways again in real time. We've also been in touch with Georgia Power, uh, making sure that they are ready to respond to Chatham. I have the utmost confidence in Georgia Power's ability to do that. Uh, we've also been talking with health and medical partners, both EMS and also the hospitals. Uh, again, my uh, satisfaction with their coordination effort and their readiness level is of the utmost, uh, utmost care. Um, we've also been talking uh, about how are we going to respond when this storm abates us or when the storm leaves us? What are the issues that need to be addressed? Damage assessment. Where are the issues that need to be repaired? How do we provide services to our general citizenry if it, uh, if it actually becomes uh, where we have to do that? So I mentioned that we have been talking with all of our government offices. Tybee Island has asked me to report that they are closed today at noon and uh, they will also be closed tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday, the city of Bloomingdale will be closed, Garden City will be closed, City of Savannah, we ha have uh, Mr. Melder here to talk about that, and Chatham County government offices will also be closed. Uh, for Wednesday and Thursday, uh, Port Wentworth, Pooler, and Thunderbolt will be closed for government services. The Coastal Health District has also asked me to report that today at 3 o'clock they will suspend operations and start back up at 10 a.m. on Thursday, depending on the damage assessment. And Kat is also here to talk about their operations. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Next to bring your remarks, uh, representing one of the largest municipalities in Chatham County, ladies and gentlemen, city manager, manager for the city of Savannah, Savannah J. Melder. Uh, thank you, Kurt. Uh, thank the school board for hosting this joint press conference. Thank you, Superintendent um, and uh, Mr. Jones. I, City of Savannah works under the coordination collaboration of SEMA. They're wonderful partners. Um, and just like SEMA in the county, the City of Savannah has been working um, for the last week to prepare um, for this event. Um, the City of Savannah government offices will be closed um, tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, in anticipation um, of the storm. All essential personnel, however, um, will report um, uh, to work um, and all essential services will be provided. Um, police and fire services will be fully staffed and upstaffed um, as needed to respond uh, to any incidents. Tomorrow, uh, we will have um, strategic crews placed um, in water resources and stormwater to make sure that all of our uh, tide gates um, and, uh, and, and uh, and pumps are, are operational. We'll have our transportation and park and tree crews strategically placed as well throughout the storm, working to clear any debris um, as weather um, allows. Um, the governor, I understand, has signed an emergency declaration earlier today. Mayor Johnson will be following suit um, uh, later this afternoon with a local emergency declaration for the city um, of Savannah. We will be um, continuing to monitor the storm tomorrow to dictate uh, what our operations will be for the city of Savannah. On Thursday, um, at the very least, we will have all critical workforce um, reporting to duty and making sure that we can do what we need to do to um, clean up any debris, clear roadways, and make sure that our stormwater and drainage and water systems are operational after the storm passes. Um, and that's our briefing for the city of Savannah. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Melder. And of course, as you look at the possible impacts for tropical storm force winds or increased uh, winds that are gusting across the highways, one of the first things we look at as a school district is how does that impact our transportation of moving 20,000 plus students day in and day out to school and back home again with our school buses on the roadways. Clearly, this is not a safe condition where you want buses out on the roads traveling. And the next individual has uh, shared goals in that and being the agent head for the Chatham Area Transit Authority. Uh, we did ask that she come as well and provide you an update uh, from their perspective and their operations and their decisions for functionality as they work through this storm as well. So now to bring you remarks from the Chatham Area Transit, please welcome Faye DeMasso. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with all of our partners today. Uh, the Ch uh, Chatham Area Transit will suspend all operations tomorrow. All operations include fixed route paratransit, the Dot Shuttle, and the Savannah Bells Ferry. The Savannah Bells Ferry will also end services at 9 p.m. tonight to allow for preparation. We will have essential personnel on site should there be the need for um, shuttle services to get people to safe shelter. Um, and we would encourage everyone to be sure that they have texted ride cat to 41411 so that you have the latest information available about our operations and services. Can we have you spell your last name for us? Huh. <laughs> I've only had to do this just a few times, right? So D like David, I M like Mary, A S S I M O. Demosomo. Did I say that right? Demosimo, right? All right, thank you again for our partners for being here today to provide this brief. We are going to open it up and answer some questions that you may have. And we'll recognize that we do have some school district personnel who are here with us in the audience that may come up and respond to appropriate questions. We have our Chief of Police, Chief Terry Enoch, with the Board of Public Education Police Department. We have our Deputy Superintendent of Operations, Ms. Vanessa Miller Kegler, who is here today. She has oversight over school buses, school nutrition, school lunch programs, and of course, the readiness and the protection uh, of our school facilities. And then, of course, we have our Deputy Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Ms. Bernadette Ball Oliver, who is with us today as well. And she has oversight over the academic platforms that we provide for our students and families to keep teaching and learning uh, through this disruption of this storm and its potential impacts. So again, we thank you all. We'll open it up to any questions you may have. Doctor, why don't you talk about, you know, some of the, y'all are expecting electricity to go out, y'all are expecting some things to not work perfectly with this virtual learning. Can you talk a little bit more specifically about what's expected of students if power goes out, if they can't get on the internet, how are they planning on getting those uh, additional assignments? Yes, so I will also invite Bernadette Ball Oliver up to join me, but essentially schools are prepared to provide students with alternative uh, assignments in the form of paper pencil all of that went out to our principals as early as yesterday to begin preparing for this in anticipation uh, so students will have those paper pencil options should the conditions not allow for uh, online learning. Obviously, the conditions may not allow for paper and pencil learning as well. Uh, so that we, we ask in those cases that uh, parents, family members, uh, guardians, just provide the, pr the principal and the teacher with information and knowledge that will allow for any makeup assignments. But I'll uh, ask uh, Bernadette Ball Oliver to come up to provide more detail. Good afternoon. We send our schools, um, as Dr. Watts mentioned, our principals have already received this information, but we uh, attach what we call choice boards. I'm sorry, we complete what we call choice boards, and we have those boards for every single grade level, and it covers all of the four core content courses to also include some electives, and it gives uh, an opportunity for students to continue to engage in learning in the event that there is a power loss, and families can uh, select activities that they can complete with their students that are still appropriate and ensure that they are still working through mastering the content on grade level. Mr. Miller, if you could just talk about, you know, what declaring a local state of emergency allows the city to do, why do it? 
uh, declaring a local state of emergency is, is really uh, an administrative function that allows um, uh, certain ordinances to be enacted, certain emergency steps to be taken um, by the city manager, um, specifically hazard pay um, or the ability to spend certain business licenses and operating um, hours for um, uh, certain types of industries. Uh, it also allows us to enact a curfew, uh, which our emergency um, declaration will do beginning tomorrow at 6 p.m., lasting until um, Thursday at 6 a.m. Um, and this allows um, us to be able to enforce that um, curfew if needed to, to be able to ensure there's public safety. This is for uh, Dennis. Um, so I get the sense that a lot of Savannah residents, Chatham residents aren't <clears throat> taking this seriously or as seriously as they should. I saw someone online describe it as a nothing burger and clearly it's not a nothing burger because we're all here. Right. I mean, what <laughs> would you tell them? Well, uh, you know, the citizens of Chatham County, they're, they're not uh, they're not foreign to tropical systems. They're not foreign to severe weather. Uh, so I think as a community, we're very well prepared for this particular storm. So sometimes that uh, tends to lead people to be complacent. Uh, however, this is a dangerous storm. Uh, this is uh, expected to be tropical storm force winds over a prolonged period of time. Uh, there are gusts uh, close to Hurricane Street, especially along the islands. So we really want people to heed the warnings that are coming out from the National Hurricane Center, the National Weather Service, uh, follow the guidance that's been issued by the uh, local officials through uh, your municipality as well as the county and uh, just be vigilant. We want people to be aware of what the threats are for, for themselves and their community and we want them to make informed decisions. So be aware, uh, stay engaged and make sure that you have all the information you need to make informed decisions for yourself and your family. And Dennis, I know you guys have been talking with the National Weather Service today. Um, right. Anything that they told you that, you know, would warrant a change of course for you guys? Do you expect things to change in the coming hours and days? So uh, the last full advisory from the National Hurricane Center came out at 11 o'clock. The information that I gave you was from that particular briefing. We'll get another briefing uh, at 5 p.m. today. We'll have a, a 6 o'clock a conference call with the National Weather Service where we'll get a little bit more information. But everything that I have given you today is the information that is as, as current as it can be, or at least as soon as I walked in that door. So uh, there may have been something that has come out since, but uh, yeah, everything that I've, I've given you is, is everything that I have right now. And Dr. Watson, we understand that there was a meeting for parents of ESOL students scheduled. I mean, has that been rescheduled at all? It has been scheduled for virtual again, to allow for people to be in the safety of their homes. Uh, again, I'll ask uh, Bernadette Ball Oliver to come up and provide additional details about that. So yes, our principal of Groves High School communicated with families earlier this week. We did uh, pivot that meeting. It will be virtual tonight at 6 p.m. Families will be given additional information and we have set up many welcome centers in each of the high schools where the students will be reporting next week so that we can still give out the information. We will have a translator online available. The principal has also provided every student with a personal letter from Groves High School and the students do have a welcome center location at each high school that will receive them on September 5th. Let me ask you this, because uh, I heard what you were saying over yeah. there. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there we go. We opened it up. Of course, Friday night football yeah. is going to be kind of a game time decision on Thursday. Right. What's going to kind of be did those decision makers? Yeah. What's going to what has to happen for there not to be games? Yeah, so Ms. Ball, all of our were just talking about that because you know, there are some residual aspects of the school district operations that do are impacted in our decision. Obviously, athletics is one of them. We want to remind also all of our families that you know, with this closure, if you're not in person in one of our buildings, then the associated after-school activities are not going to happen. That's important to remember. Uh, we have partnerships with the YMCA of Coastal Georgia, for example, with that offers a 
prime time services in our schools for after school care. Those will not be open. So as long as a school building is not open, certain components that come with that building and that structure and its operations will not be open either. Athletics is a big part of our school district and what we offer for our students in a, in a rounded experience in our middle and our high schools across the entire district. So athletic activities have been canceled on Wednesday and Thursday. We will be looking at and hopefully hopeful that the Friday night games that are scheduled will go on uninterrupted. However, we would not come out with a statement to say strongly that that will or will not happen until we do a full assessment of the storm impacts and we cannot do that until Thursday. And that's a unique aspect of this storm with the timing of it as it's rolling through our Chatham County areas and we still don't know as Mr. Jones mentioned that the track of the storm could change uh, well into the point where it comes over Chatham County and we're concerned about that. So we don't know the level of impact that we could see when we wake up on Thursday morning. So we need to take that day to provide proper assessment. We will get our teams out there, our crews out there to look at our buildings. They'll also look at our athletic facilities to determine A, could the children who are involved as student athletes continue to move forward on Thursday with practices to prepare for games on Friday night. So that's a big thing that we take into consideration in that whole logistical aspect of saying, will the students be ready for play on Friday night? And then of course by Friday night, will our facilities where we're hosting play be able to receive students in a safe manner? So those are really the key components that we look at. The major overarching aspect of it is, we have 426 square miles of coverage in Chatham County that we have to go through on Thursday to determine the readiness for school opening. And one thing that we are somewhat uh, lucky with, I guess, on the timing of this storm is that we already had an embedded e-learning day on Friday anyway. So students on Friday would not be in the classrooms learning. As part of our regular academic calendar, they would be at home in a virtual space. Of course, our staff, who are working will be reporting to the school district. So we have given notice to all of our staff today that as they work and get ready for Friday, the expectation is that we are hopeful for them to be there on Friday, but if there are any changes that could impact them being there in person, we'd provide that further update on Thursday after the assessment that we do um, across the county. Anything? Okay. Mr. Milner, this may not be under your purview per se, but uh, have you been in communication or has anyone from the city been in communication with homeless shelters and what they're going to be doing to uh, address that, those, that particular part of our population? Uh, yes, we have, and I, I think Mr. Jones, too, and SEMA is also in touch with the homeless authority and our providers. Um, uh, so we have a strong provider network. Um, they're opening up as many beds as they can. Uh, the Homeless Authority is um, coordinating um, outreach to uh, people experiencing homelessness and unsheltered homelessness. Um, the City of Savannah um, has a plan in place to open up an additional emergency shelter if needed and we'll make that call um, uh, uh, tomorrow as that decision dictates. Uh, but yes, we are in um, coordination with our homeless service providers through the Interagency Council on Homelessness, through the Homeless Authority and through SEMA as well. It's a big part of uh, the response that we have for us uh, uh, tropical cyclone like this. Mr. Jones, can you speak any more to that? Yeah, the, uh, the Homeless Authority has a very strong support network. It's called the Continuum of Care. It's composed, composed, composed of a lot of non-governmental organizations and other support partners. Uh, they've had regular conference calls with that Continuum of Care group and uh, they all have stepped in to assist. So I think uh, as far as the homeless goes, we're in pretty good shape with uh, coordinating any resort, uh, support efforts for those individuals. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, again, thank you to all of our partners for being here today and supporting it, the, this effort to share information uh, for our public at large. We've been streaming uh, through the district's live stream channel to our YouTube channel, so all of this can be uh, reviewed there or repurposed in further broadcast to share the messages. Thank you so much to our media partners for helping us get the information out. Uh, timely, quality, accurate information. Of course, all of our information can always be found on the district's website at W 
www.sccpss.com. Thank you all for being here.